more updates landing on the PlayStation 5 releases, I know it simply improves value for older games. I myself, as a keen stalwart against all things persistently online and subscription locked, do see the silver lining at least of this cloud-based world we find ourselves in. But do the benefits outweigh the cons in this VRR update for Nathan Drake and crew? We are in uncharted territory. <laughs> you see? <laughs> Now this new update comes weeks before the PC release of the very same title, just over a year after its PS5 updates shipped. Now I am aware that a lot of the benefits we're seeing here, which is one of the things I prefer around the Sony Studios, is they collaborate, they merge, and they use all of their shared experiences to feed the rest of the teams. It started really with Insomniac's 120 FPS update, which offered 40 FPS, that halfway point between 30 and 60, and it feels so much better for an improvement in terms of input times and also response, and it bridges the gap between that 60 and 30, giving a little more headroom for developers. The VRR mode allows them to push even further on that and allow VRR to capture that 48 FPS ceiling kind of where it can top out but we see some differences in this title you can go and check out my original coverage on that with rift apart spider-man and obviously horizon where gorilla have picked that up but it moves on and throughout the sony studios naughty dog have certainly picked it up with the last of us picking it up and the last of us part one remake which i recently covered and now here we're seeing it in this update on the uncharted titles uncharted 4 and the lost legacy which were both playstation 5 ports from the ps4 pro there are very subtle differences in terms of the lod there's some tiny extra foliage you can see at certain points in titles but you've got to be standing still and staring off into the distance to see it the performance plus mode actually looks like it has uh, missing foliage reduced lot it doesn't it's because again like i cover a lot on my channel those buffers make a difference so the lower the resolution the more you can lose it within that taa and it kind of gets lost in the ether it looks like it's disappeared but you can see here it's not it's just still there so again, what you've got is a ever so small increase in foliage over the PS4 Pro and therefore the PS4 in all modes on the PlayStation 5. But aside that, everything else is resolution related, which means you get identical visual settings across all modes. Fidelity, Performance and Performance Plus. And that's exactly the same modes, exactly the same output settings I'm going to cover when you turn on those VRR modes. What we've got here is the same title and i've covered it in depth already over on ign so it's still a great game but it's fundamentally a playstation 4 pro port over to ps5 it's native code it improves loading significantly over the pro but it's not really a brand new title but it is a nice improvement over the pro version more specifically in the input times and therefore the frame rate that the game can deliver so what does these VRR modes offer then? Well, they give you the choice to turn off any limitation that might be there. So they've added in that 120 FPS mode, which allows 40 FPS in that 4K fidelity mode. So that's native 3840 by 2160. It now no longer targets 30 FPS, and you can see all the old modes here side by side. So what you had before this update was you had just the menu, which allowed you to jump between those modes, which was 30, 60, or 120. They basically scaled down their resolution, so they went from 3840 by 2160 in fidelity, down to 2560 by 1440 in performance, the same as the Pro, and then down to 1920 by 1080 in that performance plus mode, which targets 120 FPS. That's the same here, that hasn't changed. So when you choose that mode now and you turn VRR on, if you've got it in the option, you can then have two options. You can unlock both the performance and the fidelity mode, or you can still run that fidelity mode just at 40 FPS, a flat 40. So that means you get much smoother performance, faster input times over that 30 FPS, but you don't have any impact at all to the overall presentation. It's exactly the same 4K output, which means a nice clean and sharp image. Obviously, if you have a 1440p screen and not one that supports HD, my 2.1 the new update to the playstation 5 allowing you to support 1440p means you can now run 120 fps at 1440p Unfortunately, not every TV supports this particular HDMI 2.1 output at 1440p, so you'd have to test your particular screen. Some It works on mine, but one of my desktop PCs, it doesn't work. So that is a bit of a hit and miss. And also, the 1080p mode in Performance Plus is always 1080p no matter what you set it in the output menu. You can't override that in the OS. 
So side by side, you can see that the fidelity mode does a very good job now of running very close to a locked 40 FPS in all the tested sections here. It can dip, obviously it can dip just below into the mid 30s, but overall it still feels quite smooth and traversal on combat. And again, there might be some sections that are worse than others, but overall in my play here, I found it very enjoyable in that fidelity mode. But the best mode for me now is that performance mode. By turning that on and then flicking on that VR option, it means you can run that 60 FPS, which was pretty much locked anyway, up to and above 80, 90 FPS at certain points. So again, in the side-by-sides, you can see the kind of performance we're gaining here by having that VRR option. And I'll go through that at the end of what kind of performance leaps we're seeing in total. But overall, the performance mode now is exceptional. It's not quite as good, obviously, as that uh, performance plus 1080p 120 fps mode but with a vrr screen it can actually feel significantly better at times and that's because vrr if, so long as it keeps within that refresh cycle and again my capture here is directly from the output of the console itself using a vrr capture card the Elgato HD60X. And this allows me to use that direct capture, run it through my tool, which I wrote myself. And then with that VRR capture at 120 FPS feed, it means I can give you the frame times that you would see on your screen. This is exactly the same, and I've tested this in my full review when you compare it against the output of the screen itself. So go check out my full review for more details on that and the actual difference between the frame times. But remember, frame rates are a byproduct of frame time. That's the only thing that matters. Developers, engines, they're all working towards a time to render the frame, to draw each individual frame. So here, you can run at 8 milliseconds, which gives you 120 FPS, or you can run at 33 milliseconds, which gives you 30 FPS, and then combinations thereof. Within the PlayStation 5, the VRR mode allows it to run anywhere between 48 FPS and up to 120 FPS, which means you will get frame times of anywhere between 25, 33, 16, 8 milliseconds. All of those will flip-flop around. But the reason that, that works with VRR is so long as it's above that 48 FPS level, then the frame time being closer together feels smoother. That's exactly why 40 feels much smoother than 30, because it's only 25 milliseconds per frame, not 33. You're almost 50% closer together, and that's why it feels smoother. That means you're getting faster and more responsive input times. And the game is actually quite high anyway. I mean, the base version on the PS4, around 145 milliseconds of input latency. That's taken into account the screen and obviously the engine itself. And that's the median, so the most likely you're going to get from various tested sections. But the PS5 is actually slightly slower in that 30 FPS fidelity mode. It's 150 milliseconds. Very small, um, almost in imperceptible to the average user, but it's definitely there in terms of my tests. But once you turn on these modes, it means you can go up to the very best in that 120 FPS mode, which takes around 56% off that input time, knocking it down to around 95 milliseconds as a median. That's much, much faster, and it therefore feels so much more responsive in a fast-paced title like this. The Naughty Dog engine does stack a lot of frames up. In fact, it's three frames jobbed over the CPU and the GPU to try and maximize the hardware. This is still almost certainly the same engine that they're using here. They'll be currently beavering away on improving that. And this is the same as it is on The Last of Us Part 1 and Part 2 as well. They're still native PS5 code, but it's still the same source engine that it was before. So it's still using those three frames of latency. The thing here, with you bumping up that throughput and therefore the speed at which a frame can be flipped, you're now seeing a much shorter time to when you get it to the output from the input on your controller and output to screen, which means you can see significantly better performance. And that goes right from that fidelity. 40 FPS mode right up. So if you use VRR, you can actually gain much closer input times to that 120 FPS mode, but still run the title at 1440p and therefore get the best image quality, the sharpest image quality, and almost imperceptible performance matches. Because once you're above 80, 90 fps it's almost imperceptible to see the difference between that and 120 the gaps get much much smaller you can see the gap between 40 fidelity and 60 it's much smaller than 30 to 60 but you can definitely feel it when it drops below that 40 fps likely because the vrr can't drop that low on the ps5 so it doesn't help out but anything below 40 is effectively 30 anyway so that's where you should be sitting it's not really going to make much of a difference having any additional vrr rate at that low level even if you turn on frame compensation because all that's doing is allowing it to flip into a smaller container and then you're back to just running the game at 120 fps so this update does allow the game to feel much much better
Damn it! Across both titles, this performance update boosts both the FPS and those input times in the 4K Fidelity mode and the 1440p performance mode. That base 1080p performance plus mode already targeted 120 FPS and therefore is unchanged here. If you have a 120 FPS screen, then this mode is still the most performant of the bunch, even with this update taken into account. However, the 120 FPS fidelity mode, meaning a capped 40 FPS output, is the overall best in terms of IQ and as close to 60 FPS at 4K that you can get if you enable VRR. And in very quiet sections, you can hit 60 FPS, but it's very often around the midpoint of 45 FPS, which is exactly what the average FPS comes out on my frame rate tool here in these tested segments. That 1080p mode is certainly the best performing of the lot, not a surprise though, as it has a huge resolution gap, a quarter of that fidelity mode and just over half of the 1440p. What this VRR update does allow though is that hardware headroom to be utilized if you have the screen to benefit from it. Giving us a view of the power left on the table within the PlayStation 5 in these fixed modes, something that dynamic resolution scaling really takes advantage of. Something common on consoles, in fact, with these fixed modes, and this is actually the first generation where we can actually often see these limits removed. The beauty here is these are pure benchmarks with fixed resolutions and settings, which will really help the comparison to the PC platform once that launches next month. And obviously, I'll be diving into that over on IGN and here. So what are the gains here overall then from those original modes to the new options that are now been added? Well, as you can see the on-screen graphics here, the fidelity mode on its own at 40 FPS capped is already 33% faster than the old 30 FPS mode. And that's, again, on average. And recall, as I've covered before in previous videos, when you uncap a game from 33 milliseconds like this, you actually retrieve some more of performance in and of itself, just uncapping it or increasing the frame time means you're giving the engine more time because it's less likely to be stalling and waiting around for that sync point, which can cause CPU and GPU to wait, and therefore you're underutilizing the hardware. So that in and of itself can boost performance, and that's why PC tests are always doing vSync off. And as you can see here, it's 60% faster on average over that old 4K 30 FPS capped fidelity mode. Now, obviously, it's going to peak and trough at some points that's bigger, some points that's smaller, but on average, that's what it's coming out at 47.8 FPS which just shows you the kind of headroom that's left over in the PlayStation 5. But obviously, the next mode we can test with the same settings here in terms of the performance mode, it's a little different. Resolution is significantly higher in the performance 1440p mode, but the output in terms of the target is the same. They can both potentially only hit 120 FPS. We're not gonna beat that here, and obviously we don't, but we get pretty close. What we can see is that unlock fidelity mode is around 21% slower, or give or take 20% slower than that performance 60 mode, but it is running with a 66% higher resolution output than that performance mode at 60. And again, if that's 100% base, it means unlocking that and allowing it to run up to 120 FPS. We're gaining another 45% give or take on average over that previously capped 60 FPS mode. That's at the same resolution settings, the same visual output. So again, you can see the kind of performance headroom that's often left on the table on these console ports. Let me be clear, this is a last generation title, it's not going to be utilised in the PS5's hardware and all the benefits the PlayStation 5 brings, that will come much later from Naughty Dog and other teams. But ultimately, it's a nice benefit and it really shows you the kind of power that's available and will help a lot comparing this to the PC version very soon. Beyond this, we can look at the famous E3 run through the Raiders of the Lost Ark section and compare performance 120 at 1080p to performance 1440p now unlocked with VR on. 
Again, as you can see, it's not going to beat that mode, but it does have a much higher resolution. With it running, you know, 77% higher resolution, it's actually within 30% of touching distance of that 120 FPS 1080p mode. So that shows you the kind of headroom that's left over. Again, I'm going to stress, as you can see with the frame time graph, it's peaks and troughs. It's not always going to be this distance. It's going to go up. It's going to go down. But ultimately, what you can see is it's a significantly better running title in all modes. And that VRR option only allows you to utilize more of the PlayStation 5's power and therefore get faster input times and frame rates. And again, just to round up the details here, these are the deltas we're talking about in terms of resolution difference. You can see it's only a quarter of the output in that 1080p mode. But look how close the performance is of that 60 FPS fidelity mode. It's very impressive that we're seeing these updates from these teams. And long may they continue in terms of really utilizing the additional elements that VRR brings. I've always said this before, back in the old days when power was 50, 50 hertz was perfectly fine compared to 60 hertz. We've now got 40. So these options, utilizing 120 FPS screens and VRR and combined, really shows that Sony and all of the worldwide studios are thinking outside the box in terms of utilizing the hardware better, not just to push 120 FPS rates when it doesn't get anywhere near it, but really give you options. Even if you don't have a VRR screen, you can still run that 40 FPS fidelity mode on a 120, but if you do, then there's multiple modes here to choose from, and that can only be a good thing. And once again, we've reached the end of another video. If you like what I do here, remember this is a side project. I'm completely self-funded and independent. And if you can help, any pounds or dollars via my Patreon link, which is down below, really helps. Check out all my other videos, but obviously always do the like, subscribe and share because that really helps the YouTube algorithm. I know it's annoying, but what can I do? And if you haven't, subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications of new content. There's all exclusive access on my Patreon, early access to good stuff, and hopefully something for everyone in this deep dive world of games and technology. Anyway, I'll catch you on the next one.